Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you how I lay out <clears throat> my power plate for the Vergen Fullet Escapement. Now, this particular one, I want five power paddles. Okay, so we start with just a round plate. In fact, I got this out of a scrap yard, bought it for scrap metal, and uh, it's uh, roughly seven and seven eighths of an inch in diameter. Has a little slit here because they would cut it with a uh, laser cutter and they start off the circle. They wanted the hole, not the piece in the hole. And they just went over to the line and came around and cut with a CNC uh, computer uh, laser, laser uh, cutter. Okay, now, so we get a piece of metal, uh, strap metal. Now, I've got this off of a construction job and you can too. Uh, AC people use this to hang their uh, flexible duct work for the delivery of the air conditioning on, on commercial jobs. Uh, they throw this stuff about, about, I mean, feet and feet and feet of it. They get a roll and they get down to the last 50 feet. Well, it's, it's too short to mess with, so they just throw it in trash. You can get this stuff free. It's fairly straight. It's machine cut and rolled. Okay. Anyway, wrap it around, get it, make it longer than you want, and uh, cut it, and then take your, your uh, speed square and square the ends so that you don't make a mistake and get it wrong. Just simply wrap it around like so, draw it really tight, and mark it right where you cut it with, with straight uh, scratch off. Okay, now you have exactly, I mean to a hundredth of an inch, I don't know if you can see that mark or not, but it's there. Now that's within a hundredth of an inch of how far it is around it. Okay, uh, next clip I'm going to uh, redo what I showed once before on a uh, video about on my uh, dry erase board in my office, how to take a straight line, which once you take this and stretch it out, you've got a straight line and divide it into as many equal parts, exactly equal parts as you wish. Okay, that'll be the next clip. Let me set up for that. Okay, we've uh, rough measured our total length around the disc, and it measures uh, right at 37, 3 quarters, 38 inches, something like that. So the next figure up that would uh, evenly come out to 5 would be 40. So 4 times 8 is 40, so we'll set our dividers at 8 inches. And uh, we're using a yardstick from uh, Home Depot, 30, uh, 69 cents. And the reason I like using the yardstick, they're pretty that gone accurate for what we're doing. And they're wood, so I, my point of my dividers can go right into the wood and hold one end still while I adjust the other. We start at 10, go to 18. That gives us 8 inches on the divider. 5 times 8 being 40. We start at this end. Now, this end, the angle is going this way. At the other end, it's coming up that way. So you simply start at the end and mark one, two, three, four, and five and then you come back over here to this end and do the same thing start at your starting point and mark one okay as you can see we went off camera and did all the other work the, the boring stuff okay to review we uh, wrapped our uh, strap around the plate, mark it so we got the exact uh, circumference, we drew a line down the center, mark the ends exactly so, we just made an angle from the starting point out anywhere, we took the dividers and we reconstructed that angle going the opposite direction on this side over here. Then uh, we set the dividers at anything over uh, one-fifth, because we want to divide this line into five equal parts, we set the line over one-fifth. We measured it. We don't have to be accurate, because it's going to automatically, no matter how long it is, it's going to divide it out exactly the way we want. It measured uh, over uh, uh, 37 and under 38 inches. Well, we want five, so the next number up that would divide 
38 into equal 5 parts would be 40. So 1 -fifth of 40 being 8, we set the dividers at 8 inches, mark across this way, mark down this way, and we went off camera and prick punched them so that uh, we would have them, uh, you know, it was too boring to have you people watch. But uh, anyway, what we do, simply do now is take a straight edge, okay, which uh, I'd rather use this, straight edge, and just simply connect the dots. I mean, you know, that's all there is to it. You just go here and here. Now, one a little hint. When I use a scratch hole, the reason I like to prick punch from points, my cross points, is that way I can put my punch in a hole. And now I don't have to look at it anymore. I just line it up with the other one over there. Therefore, I know I'm right. And then there's my line. And just scratch a good heavy line right there. And same thing here. And here. And all the way down. Now, I'm not going to do it all on camera because I mean it's just too simple and too boring. Now we take our piece of metal that we wrapped around our disc, set it down, make sure it lines up on our ends exactly so. Okay? Just like so. And then just simply mark it out and just mark it on it like it's supposed to be. And there you go, piece of cake. Okay, folks, that'll do it. Okay, folks, uh, what we did is we laid our strap down that went around for our circumference. We laid it down and marked the points. Now, to make sure that everything's right, when we marked the points, we took our speed square and drew a line straight across uh, so that we could use either side, yay or yay. And then we took our uh, marking pen and just put a spot on the center of each one so that when we get it down there, it would make them easier to find. Simply wrapped it around, let the uh, good end overlap, like so, okay? And then just go around with the scratch all and find the lines and make a little V mark at each spot, which I don't know if you can see those or not, but uh, they're there. Let's see, there's one there, 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 and there. Okay, so that divides our circumference, or our uh, circle, into five equal parts. Now we've got to find the center, which I've already done a video on that. It's super simple. I'm not going to waste anybody's time. We'll find the center, and we'll connect all those lines to center. And then when we do that, then I'm going to show you exactly how to find out the length of your paddle or, or force bar on the uh, the axle of the uh, pendulum and how, how to find out the length that you want it to be and uh, once I do that then it's um, off camera it's uh, super simple just take my paddles and put on here and either weld them or bolt them down to it but then after that I'll have to start on the arms the paddle arms the power arms to on the axle of the uh, the pendulum and that is the very special part. That's what makes the, uh, the Verg and Foliate modified uh, escapement to where you can actually throw the pendulum over 180 degrees without it binding up. Okay? And that's, that's the whole secret to the daggone thing. And when we get this done, which should be one more video, and that should do it, or one more clip, rather, and uh, then we'll start on the, the, that other part, and I think you're going to find it very interesting. Okay? Enough for this.